All right, it's been a little while since I've done a video on something, and I wasn't initially going to do this video simply because I've already measured this machine, and I've documented its uh, performance already. So there was never a lot of motivation for me to do that, but then I thought about it, and it's like, you know, among the canisters I have, this one's one of my favorites. So I'm like, you know, why not do it? But uh, before I go into the machine too much, uh, there are s just a few differences between my machine and the standard machine you would get. So the first thing is I modified the, uh, modified the hose end here because the original hose end, I think it had the button lock further back. Or maybe it was forward. Either way, the button lock wasn't in the right position to work with most standard, like, uh, PlastiFlex wands. So, I don't have that anymore because it would only work with the, uh, proprietary curved wand. Which, that's the other thing. Because I changed that, I don't have the curved wand. And, uh, I made a little bit of a mistake when I was downsizing. I accidentally threw out my, uh, Wesselworks direct connect piece. I'm gonna guess I must have saw the uh, SIBO adapter with the cord and thought that was it. So <laughs> we're, we're just running this jury rig today. Little modification on this cord and <laughs> the uh, one from the Rotho and the uh, PlastiFlex style connection wouldn't mate with this either because this has a a plug that isn't flush unlike uh, well, I suppose the other ones aren't flush either, but they jut out a little bit more. And then this is a flush connection, so... This style works, but that style wouldn't. But, you know, with those cords I can run it. It's no huge deal. So, the hose is just very slightly different. I changed the stub out, and then the wands are different. Um, I did have the curved tube for it at some point, and I think it read slightly... I mean very slightly higher CFM than the uh, telescopic ones. I'm guessing, you know, we didn't have that difference in diameter. So, yeah, minor difference. But I just thought I should point it out. And um, I've got the two heads here because the uh, Patriot line is currently offered with both the ET1 and the uh, EBK360. Obviously, neither of them are made for this machine because I just borrowed this one from my D4 and that one's just a uh, kind of a fiddle one that I had. <laughs> um, and the machine itself, everything is as it should be. Um, mine does not have the uh, little screen, this little indicator. It would tell you when it's time to change filters or it would also allow you to... Uh, a little dusty. But it would al allow you to run it as an air cleaner and then shut it off after a time. I always wondered why my machine didn't have that, so I gave uh, the people over at uh, Shotler, I think it is, gave them a call. And they're like, oh, we offered it with and without the screen. Which, I'm fine not having that screen, because that means there's no electronics in this machine. You know, it's very simple, a cord, a switch, a motor, that's really all there is to it. And then, of course, you know, like any sort of TriStar-style machine, you have, you know, your your bag, which I use... Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, I guess it was time for a change anyways. I have a new one out for the uh, testing portion of it. Um, yeah, you have an open-collar bag. This one is a... Vacuum America Clean or Clean Obsessed TriStar style ones because they don't make OEM HEPA ones for it. They do make an allergy bag, which is a thicker paper, but I, I just don't like paper bags. And then, of course, we have the internal cloth bag, which, despite the cloth bag, you shouldn't run this machine without, you know, a proper bag. You have your motor protection filter. It's... This machine's very much like a TriStar, or like a Compact, or whatever. It's just, uh... What? But yeah, the OEM uh, Patriot bags are called the Stormy Bag, and they have a cardboard collar that fits this entire outer area. I've spoken to somebody who's a Patriot dealer, a fairly big one, I think. He runs a... I can't remember his name. 
but I think his distributorship was called like Air Lion or something like that. And it's like, you know, because a lot of us collectors said we wanted to see HEPA bags for him. And as long as Patriot does not produce HEPA bags, I will continue to buy these off-brand ones because they are superior, regardless of what Patriot likes to tell you. Because I, I, uh, I think it was them who told me, you know, oh, you know, you need to use genuine bags because the uh, airflow wouldn't be correct if you don't. Or maybe that was the TriStar repair people. I guess I'm not sure anymore. It was one of them. But it's like, there is no way I'm not going to use a bag that's going to keep my machine cleaner and give me better performance. Not a chance. All right, so I know this is getting a little long, but I do want to go over this machine. Sorry about that. So it has what's called the Arc Engine in it. The Arc Engine is a single-stage Amatec motor. It, uh... It's part of the Advant Tech line, if I remember right, and it also has those curved carbon brushes to them that are supposed to give you a longer life out of the motor. It's like I, you know, it's like I'm not sure about the lifespan of it. I, I know they gave like a estimated hours versus the traditional straight brush, but uh, it's a nice and powerful machine. And then we have an after filter. Now, I actually don't like to use the after filter. It makes kind of a... How do I put this? It makes a weird noise when you have it, and I don't like it. Um, I know these filters are supposed to last about five years, but they're around 200 bucks, and that's another reason I don't use it. It's like I'm already using HEPA bags, so all it's really doing is catching carbon dust off the motor, and it's like I don't really care about that. <laughs> You know, but I mean, if you wanted HEPA filtration, feel free to use it. Um, like I said, I don't like to use it. That's just me. For the uh, purposes of testing, we will be using it. I also don't know what sort of condition this thing is in. I mean, you can look at it from the outside, but that's not going to give you a great idea of what the inside like looks like. But... Uh, I mean, I think it's in good shape, but I can't really know. Oh yeah, and we have a six-wheeled system, two stationaries, you know, one on each side of the center, and that allows it to, uh, like, rotate on spot. It's supposed to be more maneuverable. I don't know that it makes a big difference. And for the voltage test, we're going to start off attached to the, uh, well, we'll just do the e the ET1. I think it's more commonly sold with them. So <laughs> let's take ambient voltage, turn it on. Turn the power head on. Just for fun, we're going to do this with the filter and without the filter, just for this step though. Otherwise, things will get way too long and it's like, nope, let's not do that. So, filter on, here we go. See what I mean about that noise? Take it off. hose laid as straight as it can be with that uh, angle to that. I'll give this a turn. That's better. We'll go with that. We do have some leakage from this. Alright, we just borrowed the wand that was on the ET1. 
I'm not doing this with both sets of wands. That'd be dumb. Hmm. Got a little bit of leakage like around this button on the back and right here. And down here too, huh? You know, I just realized that I forgot to measure the ET1 with the brush roll on. But I'm not going back at this point. It doesn't make a huge difference normally, so we're just gonna keep going with the uh, EBK360 here. Which makes no sense to me. The ET1 is usually much more efficient than the 360. And I wasn't recording. I figured, you know, measuring it with two different heads, why don't we put the heads up against each other? You know, because both of them are offered with this machine. And uh, I prefer the 360. You know, it definitely has more aggressive agitation to it. And I like the uh, height adjustment on it a little bit better since you, you know, control it with your foot as opposed to the ET1. But the ET1 would be better in the long run. I feel like it's a better built machine. And then of course the ability to remove the uh, brush roll entirely, you know, just pop that cap off and you can take the whole brush roll out. It makes it a little bit more ideal for people with like a, a lot of hair to clean up or a lot of longer hair, I should say. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of a matter of, you know, do you want the higher performance or do you want you know the longevity either way they're both good heads and you know as long as you don't have long hair you can't go wrong with either one of them but definitely the ET1 for longer hair and before we finish off here there's one more matter I wanted to touch on I made a recording of the numbers in my initial test back in 2009 the results were 3071 on the power head, but what I wrote down, for whatever reason, was 3701. So I got the zero and the, and the one, or, or zero and the, and the seven backwards. Alright, I found my mistake. I recorded the numbers incorrectly when I did this test. The seven and the zero are backwards. Because when I looked at the web page where I had my original results posted, I also had each of these numbers documented in photo and then it's like when I look over the nozzle numbers it's 3071 so it never had 
this much airflow at the nozzle. It was 8015 with the ET1 head. <laughs> it makes a lot more sense. I mean, you know, I've never seen a nozzle, or at least I don't think I have, with the sort of efficiency to only lose, you know, 10 CFM from the neck to the brush roll. That never made sense. And we didn't see that sort of efficiency in machines like the D4 and the Felix. So, yeah, I finally caught my own error. <laughs> but it just took an amazingly long time to do it. Because my initial test was in 2019. And it's taken, you know, close to five years now. But I'm glad I did uncover that.